Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today is discuss a little bit and do a quick demo for you guys explaining how to make cordage and what the properties of the material that you're using to make cordage should be to make good cordage. And a lot of that depends on where you live, the materials you're going to have available. But if I show you the properties that I'm looking for in a cordage material, you'll get a better understanding of what you have in your area that might work. Cordage is not a complicated process, but it's something that you need to actually see to understand. So I'm going to try to get some close-up pictures of it for you. And I am left-handed. That may be a problem for you. So if you watch my demonstration and you get a little bit confused, I'll try to explain to you what I'm doing so that it won't matter whether you do it right-handed or left-handed. It will work for you either way. Stay with me, guys. We're going to harvest a little bit more bark off this tulip poplar. We'll talk about how to process the cordage material off the bark and then we'll talk about how to make cordage. Okay guys, so this is the tree that we were messing with yesterday. And when you peel this bark up, it's gonna come off. You see there's a hole right there where that branch is coming through. That's not a big deal. You just cut that off and pop it through the bark. It's going to do that anywhere there's a branch on this tree. Okay, so there's a piece of bark that's probably eight or nine feet long. Now, we're probably not going to get one or two pieces of cordage out of that eight or nine feet long. We'll have to do some splicing. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what I want you to see is I want you to see this layer that's right underneath the bark. And that's the inner bark. And you can see those fine fibers that are pulling up away from that. And this is where we harvested it yesterday and starting to dry out. And those fibers are starting to split. And that's the reason that this stuff makes such great bird nest material when it dies is because of those fibrous properties it has. You can see I just pulled that one off of there and it's probably a foot and a half long. Very, very thin. There's no way I could get the camera close enough for you to see me making cordage with a piece of couple pieces of fiber that big. So we're going to have to work with something a little bit bigger than that. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to... We've got most of the bark off of this edge right here. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to slice it down through here like this. Just like this. And take some of that off. Now that's got, once I pull that bark layer off, this is pretty much all cordage material right here. And I want to show you how to process that down real quick. We'll just get right down here on this tree. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this through my knife just to see, just put my knife on an angle. And if there's any bark left on there, I want to get that off. You're going to want a good sharp knife for this. You can see that peeling straight off of there. Okay, again, you want a good sharp knife. Okay, let's get back to square one here for a minute. Let's take this bark that we've got. And we now have a piece of bark that's got inner bark attached to the outer bark. And you can see that. What we need to do is get rid of that outer bark. So my best bet to do is to take and split this just like this to a smaller piece that's easier to work with that's going to be thinner and then you can see right here's a knot but I want to get this outer bark separated you can see right here this is inner bark and this is outer bark and I need to get that outer bark off of there the best way for me to do that is to get it on my knife Get my knife in a stationary position, hold it at an angle, and pull that bark toward me, just like that. That's going to separate the majority of the outer bark from the inner bark. You're going to want a good sharp knife to do this stuff with. So let's just get us a couple pieces here that will work. You see I hit a knot right there. That's okay. Not a big deal. We can always splice. Okay, but this 
is what we're really looking for. So we're going to have to get rid of all of the outer bark that's on here. And you may still have some on there that you need to shave off even after you've done your initial cut or got your initial bark off. You may still have a small layer that you want to get off of there. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get this thing down to fibers. So let's work with this piece right here that I'm guessing is probably a foot long. Because that will make us, that'll force us to splice some stuff as well. So let's work with this piece and process it down to where it needs to be. And you could do this on a larger scale. Now, one thing you can do is just scrape it with your knife like this to get the rest of that off of there. If there's anything on there that you don't want left over, bark-wise, outer bark-wise, you can scrape it down just like this. And you can see the fibrousness of that material and what it looks like. When that's dry, that is fantastic fire tender. While it's wet, it makes really good cordage. Okay. Now, one thing that's important with cordage is you really want to keep this stuff pretty damp. So if you've got a canteen cup or something like that with you or some type of pot that you can put water in, it's really best to keep this stuff damp when you're working with it as best you can. Now, let's kind of split this down a little bit here. Let's split a piece off the side here and see what we've got. You can see that splitting off of there. And there's still a little bit more bark on there, or meat on there, I guess I would call it, than I really want. There, we're getting somewhere. You see there's just a thin layer there that I don't want on there. Now it's going to give me the fibrous material that I do want right there. You can see how it's stringing up now. That's what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to have to process this down a little bit. And really the best way to do this is, to, like I said, keep it nice and wet. So if we take this stuff after we process it, make sure that we're down to where we need to be. We're not quite down that far right here on this piece. See that coming off of there? Once we get that down to the thickness that we're looking for, as far as our cordage goes before we break it down into finer fibers and you can see how I can break that down very easily now but before I do that I'm going to soak it in water so I'll just take my scout bottle that I have here and I've got a small cup that I use with that bottle all the time and I'm just going to fill that up and set it off to the side here and that's where I'm gonna soak my cordage. Now you can put this cordage in your mouth as well to soak it if you wanted to but tulip poplar is a very astringent acrid type tasting material and it's going to not feel very good in your mouth it's gonna taste really really nasty so I'm gonna put some of these fibers in this water and just soak it push it all the way down inside the water and just let it absorb because it's starting to dry out here you can see some of that fibrous material right here where I stripped that bark off yesterday there's a really good piece of it right here along this edge right here that I can trim off but it's already starting to dry out that piece right there is a real good candidate for a piece of cordage but again 
it doesn't need much processing it's got a little bit of meat on it right there you can see me shaving that right off and once we get that off we've got what we want then we can soak that entire piece and get it wet and we can use it as well and again it depends on you know the diameter of your cordage dictates number one how strong it's going to be but it also dictates what you're going to use it for if i'm trying to make this cordage for a fishing line it's got to be really really thin if i'm trying to make it for a trap mechanism of some kind it's got to be really strong so it's going to have to be thin but it's going to have to be robust same time if i'm trying to make it for a bow drill string or something like that it's really going to have to be strong because it's going to have to take abrasions as well you know a lot of guys asked me yesterday why i didn't make cordage out of this tulip poplar to sew up that quiver with well the reason should be obvious by now I didn't want to spend two or three hours processing cordage to lace up a quiver. That's why I carry bank line. There's nothing wrong with combining primitive skills with modern materials. Cordage is easy to carry. A quiver is not. If I need a quiver on the fly, I can make one using natural materials to make the quiver body. And then materials like cordage that I carry make it very simple with a sail needle, make it very simple to assemble without having to use 100% natural materials to get the job done. That might take five or six hours versus an hour. The reason I think this would make a good candidate for cordage is because it has that fibrous property, just like we talked about. The other thing that I'm looking for is I want something that I can twist around my finger without it breaking. If I can twist it around my finger tight enough to cut the circulation off like that and it doesn't split out or break, it's probably going to be a good candidate for cordage. If I can yank on it pretty hard as it is and it doesn't break, it's probably a good candidate for cordage. If I can take it and tie it in a knot on itself like that and it doesn't break or split out, then it's even going to be a better candidate for cordage. And that's got a very, very small tight knot in it that didn't break. So that makes me believe that this is a good candidate for cordage. So that piece right there is really, really a good piece to start off with for our cordage exercise. And we can add some other pieces in. Now, it's got a couple spots that are a little thicker in it. You really want your cordage to be pretty uniform when you're making it. You want to use pretty uniform sized pieces if you want your cordage to turn out good. And I just split that one, but that's okay. We still got a good piece right here that we can use. So if I can twist it up like this on itself, and tug on it and it's not breaking that's going to be a good candidate for cordage without a doubt there's no question that's going to make good cordage so that's the kind of stuff that i'm looking for if i'm out here collecting natural materials to make cordage with and that's what you should look for